Hey guys, Brett here with the Hornet King channel. You have spoken and I have listened. I did a poll to see what you guys wanted to see next. I have read over 342 of your comments to see which video you wanted to see next. Either European Hornets, Yellow Jacket Ground Nest, Yellow Jackets in a Ceiling or Soffit, or Bald Faced Hornets. And the Bald Faced Hornets won by a landslide at 87 votes. Here's the removal that you voted for. Here's the video. Check it out. All right, so this is a bald-faced hornet nest. I'm actually doing two bald-faced hornet nests in this video. Um, this nest was at peak season, so there was a max amount of adults inside of it, about 500 to 600 adults inside, which is a lot for a bald-faced hornet colony. Um, and all I had to do was sit my vacuum down right near the nest, and they started crawling all out, all over the surface, and starting to get ready to swarm. Some of them were already flying around me and very agitated that I was even nearby. Um, so I had to drag my bin with my suit in it behind this tree and hide behind the tree while I put my suit on like a sissy. <laughs> so I got my suit on and I came back over and was getting things set up for the removal then. And you can already see them flying out, flying towards me. I haven't even done anything yet. So the, the vacuum has a lot of pheromone on it from all the removals that I do. So that's all it takes. I just have to put that nearby and the colonies will start swarming. So I set my phone up and I set it to slow motion. So this entire removal video was in slow motion, which was great. So I have the one camera set up on the outside of the scene and that way I could get like the entire shot. And then I have the close-up shots are in slow motion. So I'm really excited to show this removal to you guys so you can see all of the aspects of the removal in slow motion. So you can see how fast they're flying around, how fast they're crawling over, all over the nest. But when you see that up close in slow motion, it looks like they're just sitting still and not really doing anything which that's the magic of slow motion. The swarm is actually happening in a, quite a frenzy and they're crawling all over that nest super fast. So seeing that slow down it looks like it's pretty docile and, and they're not really much of a threat. So when I do my removals of bald faced hornets or really any kind of yellow jacket nest for that matter, primarily ground nests and aerial nests, I set the vacuum nozzle kind of off to the side of the entranceway, and that way that the flying adults can see the entranceway as a target to fly back to. If I cover that up, or if I put the nozzle of the vacuum directly into the hole, the ones that are flying around won't know where to go. It's just like that scene in A Bug's Life, when they're all walking in a straight line, the stick falls down, and then the one yells like, I'm lost! Well, that's kind of what happens. If you block off their, their flight pattern, that they normally, they will use the same flight pattern in and out, in and out, and if you block that with, with the vacuum, they won't fly back to that entranceway because they don't know where it is. So I always kind of sit it off to the side and allow the ones that are flying back to go to, go towards the entranceway of the nest and they fly right into the nozzle, like this. Boom, boom, boom. All those ones straight down the hole. Look at all of them. It works like a charm. It works so well every time. So that's why when people comment and they say, why doesn't he just put the vacuum nozzle right in the entranceway? Because I'm not trying to suck the ones directly out of the nest. I mean, if they take off as they're trying to fly out of the nest, they're going to get sucked up too. But I'm mainly trying to get the ones that are swarming. Because when they leave the nest, they, just, they don't just disappear or escape. They fly around me and they're attacking me and they're swarming. And then when they go back to the nest, which is what they do, I mean, they fly out for maybe 10 seconds and then they fly right back to the entranceway of the nest. So that's why I'm there with the nozzle kind of holding it perpendicular. So I wanted to turn the camera onto me so you could see what the swarm looked like around me in slow motion. So again, it doesn't look super intimidating because they're going so slow, but in real time, I mean, they are flying all over the place. I can't keep a fixation on any one particular wasp at a time. So they're flying all around here in slow motion, and it looks just so kind of like, like Dance of the Sugar Plum Fairy, you know. Um, typically they dive bomb, and this one landed right on my veil, and I was waiting for her to shoot venom into my, my, in my face, because this is what they do. So I wanted to like kind of like blow her off of me, and I made my best Bill Murray from Caddyshack face. Look at this face. Perfect. Bill Murray. <laughs> Isn't that great? <laughs> it's gold. Didn't even know I did it until I started editing. Um, so this one to the left of my veil, she lands on me. And I thought she squirt venom out of her butt. But it turns out it was actually like a perfectly lined up shot that when she landed on the veil, one was flying behind my head at the same time. 
and the one flies past her butt and makes her look like she squirted venom, but it's actually another yellow jacket flying behind me. And it was like perfectly timed and sequenced that it looked like a bald faced hornet flew out of her butt. <laughs> so I do a few rat tat tats on the top of the nest here, and that's just to jiggle any of the ones that are inside of it to come out, obviously. But the thing is, is that even though I've already done this probably five or six times, they still continue to come out. It seems like there's like an infinite amount of adults inside the nest. And like every time I tap on it, I expect it, okay, I got to the end of it. Well, no, there are always more coming out of the entranceway. So what happens is the first ones that are triggered, the, the guards as I call them, come out of the nest and they attack, they swarm. And then they fly back to the nest. Well, as you continue to tap, it's almost like they're sending like the next infantry and the next one and the next one. So they don't send everybody all at once. It's actually pretty well coordinated. So they fly out. The first, the first few fly out. They get sucked up. Well, then you tap on it again. Like, okay, wait a minute. The queen says, go back out there and attack. You know, the next, the next fleet will have to go out and attack. And then they fly out. Well, then I suck them up. Then I start tapping again. Well, okay, well, I guess we have to send more out. They just keep doing that and doing that until there's none left. So that's why I just sit there and keep tapping and tapping and tapping and tapping. And as ones come out, I vacuum them up because they try to fly and they go right into the vacuum nozzle. So you'll still see ones flying back to the nest. So as they go out, they fly around and then they come back. So this pretty much goes on for about 40 minutes. I do this over and over and over and over again. And the other part is there's ones coming back from foraging that have no idea that there is a threat happening. So when they fly back, some of them are carrying food, some of them are carrying cellulose, and they're really not in attack mode. They're just going, they're, I mean, even though they see that I'm not, sh I shouldn't be there, they still fly back to try to go directly into the nozzle. camera there smile cheese all right so when ones are flying around long enough they kind of become a little bit leery about flying into the entranceway and they'll start hovering around the nest but not going into the vacuum and that becomes frustrating for me so that's when i try to just grab them with my gloved hand and that's what i did here boom got her and even though that's slow motion you can appreciate how fast i must have been to catch a bald-faced hornet out of mid-air with my gloved hand <laughs> And people are going to think that I spliced that together. No, I actually did that. And I do that pretty pretty frequently in my removals, especially with bald-faced hornets. When you're sitting there for 45 minutes holding a vacuum nozzle, trying to vacuum up foragers as they're coming back, you kind of find something to pass the time by. There, and I caught her, and then I suck her right up. So after I vacuum up as many of the foragers and the workers and the guards as I can, um, it's time to start dismantling the nest if I'm not going to relocate it. So... I take off the little bits of envelope at a time and start exposing some of the comb. And when I do that, there's still going to be some that are inside that haven't decided to fly yet, even with after all the rat-a-tat-tats on the top of the nest that I do. So I vacuum them up and vacuum them out from off the comb. So just little bit by little bit, I just tear off parts of the envelope and expose the comb itself. And that way I can see more of the comb and see more individuals that are hunkered down and hiding between the different layers. So it's wild to think that a nest that size is really only protecting a comb that's this size. This isn't a huge comb, but the nest itself and its entirety and all the adults that were inside it was a pretty significant nest. It's always like, they were, like those dreams that you have where you can't punch very hard. That's kind of how this feels watching this in slow motion. Like, man, you just like want to grip it harder than what it looks like in the video. <laughs> and there's the comb. So once the nest is actually torn off, there's still going to be foragers that are coming back. And unbeknownst to them, the nest is now missing. So what I do is I simulate the entranceway of the nest with the nozzle of the vacuum. And I set that up inside the bush at the same proximity as to where the original entranceway was. And once coming back from foraging, bloop, 
go right into the nozzle, not really thinking that, oh, this looks different. This is no longer looking gray and like my nest, but they fly right into it every time. So what I do is I take my vacuum nozzle and I take my mic stand and I just clip it pretty close to where the original entranceway was and then just let it sit there and vacuum them up. And it works like a charm. Bloop, down the hole. So this was the second nest removal that I had to do for the day and bald faced hornets are my most common removals that I do. So I don't film every one of them, but this one I was glad I had it running because this guy told me that this nest was a decent sized nest. He said, oh yeah, it might be, you know, about the size of a basketball. Well, this thing was a heck of a lot bigger than that. This was the largest bald faced hornet nest I have done to date. I would have showed the entire removal process, but since it was so deep in the bush, there was really no way for me to get the camera in there to see the vacuum nozzle sucking up the adults. This is the biggest bald faced hornet nest I've ever done. By far. Look at that. So this is by far the largest bald faced hornet nest I've ever done. So I decided just to keep it intact and I actually still have it now. It's in my barn. Alright, so once after I got this thing all bagged up and got it back in my car, so once I get this thing all bagged up, I put the vacuum nozzle inside that bush and pretty much same proximity as to where the entranceway was and I let that just suck up the remaining foragers and guards that are flying around here swarming before I leave. So once I got home, I decided to relocate one of the bald faced hornet nests that I had actually removed this particular day. And you can see here that I already have three nests up here. So this has three full colonies of bald faced hornets side by side. They are not as territorial as people think that they are. If you sit them side by side, they will coexist. And in some cases, they actually swap between the different nests as to which one they go to and build on and everything else. Um, each one of these nests had their own queens. and now at this point I can't tell which wasps come from which nest and they fly around to each individual one and sometimes they're all caked to one of them sometimes they're on other ones so they're not very territorial they have no problem living and coexisting so I brought this one home and you can see this swarm all over me and one stings me on the top of the head it stung me through my suit and through my hat I don't know how it did it but it did it and it hurt <laughs> so I hot glue the nest to the bottom of this board mainly because I wanted to be able to see how much envelope they build around this thing. You can see them attacking my head. They're mainly going to that one spot because one of them obviously shot a pheromone marker there. So I hold the nest up there, let the hot glue dry, and then once it's done, I can take my hand away. So here you see that there are f five bald-faced hornet combs side by side, but only three ended up existing there because for whatever reason, the bald-faced hornets chewed the glue on those two outside nests and dropped them, which they were the two bigger comb. I was hoping that they would last the longest, but they didn't. Hey, hey, get out of there. Wait.
Daisy. You better watch that. She's going to go after you. Look, she's pulling all the larvae out for you. Isn't that nice? She ain't going to put up with that. Scared the skunk, Tiggers. You scared the skunk. Video. All right, well, thank you so much for tuning in to check out this video. If you guys enjoyed this content, drop in the comments. Let me know what you think. If you have any suggestions for future videos, something like to be covered in an upcoming video, also drop in the comments. Let me know. If you guys haven't subscribed already, please consider doing so. And if you'd like to, hit the bell notification down below. That way you guys get an update on how I do post a video. All right, well, thank you so much for tuning in to check out this video and supporting my channel. And I'll catch you guys on the next video. All right, everyone, thank you so much for tuning in to check out this video. If you guys enjoyed this content, drop in the comments, let me know what you think. If you have any suggestions for future videos, something to see me cover in an upcoming video, also drop in the comments, let me know. If you guys haven't subscribed already, please consider doing so and hit that bell notification down below. If you guys get an update until I do post a video. If you guys haven't subscribed, thank you so much for tuning in to check out this video and supporting my channel. I'll catch you guys on the next video.